Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking about swim bait fishing for winter bass. As those water temps start dropping, the swim bait becomes an incredible tool when you want to get a big bite. But you need to understand the different retrieves and the different styles of baits that will help you catch those fish. Now, as you probably know, we have been doing a ton of buyer's guides lately. Today officially marks the end of the buyer's guides. This is something completely different. Today, we're actually talking technique. In a perfect world, I would have you guys out on the water today, but I've had to take a little bit of a break from fishing while healing up. Uh, more to come on that in, in some upcoming videos, but uh, I'm doing very well. Just needed to take a couple of weeks to get healed up properly before I'm back out in the cold. So today we're just talking swim baits instead of going out there and doing it, but I'll overlay some previous fish catches for you to help you understand the concept. So as the water is cooling down in winter, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can essentially go for a giant fish or you can go for numbers or quality fish. They're two different approaches. We've decided to break this down into a couple of videos. So today I'm talking swim baits, specifically targeting those big bites. Then Tim will be talking about taking more of a finesse approach, just targeting fish in general. So with the swim bait, as your water temps begin to cool, doing it right, becomes a much smaller opportunity. Less baits will work, less retrieves will work. The windows of opportunity get smaller. So you really want to key in on the right baits and the right retrieves. Right now, here we are, end of December, water temps in the Northern states are frigid, right? A lot of you guys are already frozen up. So sort of irrelevant up there, but for the whole rest of the country, most people have water temps right now somewhere between the really low 40s and the mid 50s. That's where most of the country is sitting. That is prime time swim bait fishing. As it dips into the 30s, it gets very, very specific. And we're going to cover that. But let's start, let's start at the top of the range and we'll work down from there. So essentially, there's three styles of baits that will work consistently right now. One is a glide bait. The next is going to be a boot tail style bait. And then the last is going to be a wedge tail style of bait. That's it. And I grabbed a couple examples of each. But as those water temps are dipping, there will be a glide bait bite all through the 50 degree water temps. Bass should still be up. They should still be feeding. They should be aggressive. And a glide bait will catch those fish. There are all kinds of glide baits on the market. These are two of my favorites. This is a River to CS waiver. This is a Bait Sanity Explorer. Both come in a bunch of colors. Like every video down in the description, I will link you my absolute favorites. You know, this bait in a couple of my favorite colors. Same with this, all these different things. There's a reason I chose these baits. A lot of baits in the glide bait category need to be worked to get the action out of them. You've actually got to get those baits to cut and to work, to walk, essentially. If you just steady retrieve them, they don't quite do it. Those are not the baits you want to throw as those water temps start to drop. When you hit the 50s, it's really important that you've got a bait like an S waiver or an Explorer that when you just steady retrieve and that's it, that bait will have a really good glide. The colder the water gets, the more critical that becomes. Summertime, warm water temps, shallow water around cover, those baits where you're chopping that handle to get them to work, they're really darty, they're really aggressive. They elicit phenomenal strikes from fish, but as the water temps drop, that slow methodical glide is very important to pulling those fish up to the bait. Now we'll still twitch them and pop them once in a while. So 
We've always talked for years, like seven or eight years, we've talked about slow rolling an S waiver, four handle turns, really slow, and then two twitches, and then repeat. The idea behind that is to give a fish time to rise to that slow swimming bait. It's just cruising. There's time for that fish to come up, then that bait makes its kicks, and they ambush it. But if that bait is just walking through the water, being aggressive, darting all the time, cold water fish tend to not be willing to run that down. So you must throw a glide that's got that slow, fluid action if you want to pull those fish up at all. Now, in the 50s, all of the baits will work. But as you start dipping towards the 40s, those glide baits in most fisheries, fall away. And the reason why is the fish will start to go deeper. They'll start to insulate themselves from the surface. As they're dropping down, the glide bait just naturally doesn't work as well in that water column. So if you're in a really shallow fishery, you can probably still continue to get away with it even in the mid to low 40s. But in most lakes where those fish are sucking down, they're headed to the bottom of structure before they were up shallow, sitting up you know, in the brush, sitting up against rocks, up around docks. Now all of a sudden they're sucking down to those outside dock pilings. They're headed to the bottom of a rock bank. They're getting down low, sitting at the base of structure. That's really where the soft baits take over. Boot tails and wedge tails are great this time of year if you choose the right bait. With any soft plastic swim bait, the colder the water gets, the more rigid the plastic will get. The plastic itself will get stiffer. So a lot of baits that have an amazing action in the spring, in the summer, in the fall will hardly swim at all in the winter time. And you need to take that into account. You want to fish the baits that are the softest because those are the baits that will continue to kick, especially with a boot tail. With a wedge, wedge tails just naturally kick really well in cold water. Most boot tails won't. They will get too stiff. The tail will go dead. It will start to drag in the water rather than kick in the water. And it'll really screw things up. So a couple of baits for you. That's a Scottsboro. I almost always throw the six inch. There's just something magical about that size in the Scottsboro. Now that guy is the big size of the trash fish. I use the big one and the six inch um, and the six inch fat for that matter. All three are great baits, but the trash fish, I mean, you see how soft and floppy this bait is. The fins are floppy. Everything is super soft. It just continues to kick even in the coldest water. Now this bait is so soft that it's not a bait that you would throw out and just wind back to the boat. This is actually a bait designed to just bottom crawl. That's what you wanna do with a soft bait right now. Same with the Scottsboro. You're going to throw these baits out. This is rigged on an eight aught beast hook. This guy, you would put a 10 aught beast hook. Those are my size preference for those two baits. So they're both rigged weedless. They'll both fish great on bottom. You throw them out, you let them hit bottom, and you just slow crawl. In fact, I've got a reel sitting here. You are just going to slow crawl those baits. We've talked about this before. If you think you're going slow enough, go slower. Really, really slow. Now, if you're coming down rock and it's bumping along the rock and you feel it fall off the edge, disengage that reel, let that bait free fall. Soon as it hits bottom, re-engage, continue to crawl. If it breaks loose at bottom again, let it fall. But be prepared. A lot of times that bait will be crawling down those rocks. It's coming down the bank, falls off and it'll swim till it hits bottom again. It'll come out fall off a rock, swim down. While it's swimming down, it gets swiped a lot. So a lot of times it's on that actual free fall that you'll feel a little tick. You wanna quick engage that reel and set that hook. These baits, the really big fish in the coldest water tend to be the softest biters. So keep that in mind. 
All sorts of people will give you different opinions on when to set the hook, how to set the hook. My take is very simple. If I feel them touch that bait, I hammer my hook set home. Some people like to wait. I do not. I freight train them. If I feel a tick, if I feel a bump, if I feel a freight train, any of the above, I smash them. The reason why is that sometimes a small fish will come down and grab it and they've got to reposition and eat it. And I'm probably going to pull it away from that fish. That wasn't the fish that I was there to catch. When a true giant comes down, they very rarely, when you're going slow on bottom, <clears throat> they very rarely come down and try to just massacre that bait. That's not their feeding style. When it's going slow, they come in and they watch it. When they decide to eat, say that bait rolls off that edge and starts to swim, they come near it and they don't actually hit it. They suck it in. So that bait will start to fall. They'll suck the bait and all the water around it will go into their mouth and then you'll feel a tick as their mouth shuts on the line. It'll feel like a jig bite, tick, that's it. If you wait, the next thing you'll feel is them blow it back out. That's why I don't wait. Swinging early will cost you some small fish, but it will save you on that fish of a lifetime that completely vacuumed in your bait and you felt nothing until their lips hit the line. Feels just like a jig bite because it's truly the same thing. It's just right on that line in front of the head. The whole bait's already gone. Hit those fish as hard as you can. So this style of bait will work down, all the way down until that water starts to hit very low 40s, very high 30s. I love boot tail style baits anywhere that these fish are eating bait fish. So not trout or kokanee. If they're eating trout or kokanee, I really prefer a wedge. If they're eating bait fish, you can throw a wedge or a boot. But again, the boot that you choose is critical. It's got to be super soft. It's got to be able to swim in that ice cold water. And last is those wedge style tails. This is a Savage Gear. This is a Huddleston. Both baits will kick at just the slowest, slowest speeds. I'm talking even slower. Just barely turning that handle. It's not the most exciting way to fish, but let's get real. It's the end of December. For most anglers, now there are lakes that rock in the wintertime. There are actually a lot of lakes that rock in the wintertime. But for a lot of people, if you're going out this time of year, you're only fishing for a couple of bites, maybe a handful of bites all day long. And I'm talking worming, throwing a jig, whatever it is that you're doing. You're not fishing for that many bites. So why not commit the time to the giant bait and you're still just trying to get a couple bites, but if you get them, it will be that fish of a lifetime, or at least your odds of it being that fish time of that fish of a lifetime will skyrocket. So it's not the most exciting fishing. Throw that bait out there. Let that thing go all the way to bottom and then just creep. And I mean, painfully slow. Turn that handle. So slow. You will swear that that bait is doing nothing, but it's kicking. Every time it bumps into a pebble, every time it hits a rock, every time it hits anything on the bottom, it gives a little shimmy back through the bait and that tail kicks back there. And those fish will smash that thing. Now, where are we throwing these baits? Again, fish are backing out. They're sitting on outside structure. If rock is available, they're on rock. So these fish are sitting on the ends of points where that point comes out and breaks off. They're sitting on funnels where the lake gets narrow. You've got steep walls on both sides. You've got some rock in there somewhere. They're sitting there. In a lake where they're stalking trout, they're probably close to the boat ramp where the trout are getting put in. Right? It's pretty predictable stuff. If you've got a set of docks, that you fish all the time that has fish in it, and you've got one dock that reaches out farther than the rest, 
your best fish is probably sitting on the deep pilings of that farthest out dock this time of year. They're not hard to find. You know where they are. So it's about patience, going ultra slow, putting a giant meal in front of the right fish, and waiting for them to take that opportunity. Again, it can be done with a glide bait. You can throw a glide bait out, let it sink down, fish it slow, slower than normal, just enough to keep it swimming, and then add those twitches in. That's when you'll get that strike. Or you can switch over, you can throw the soft baits, just ultra slow crawl them, if it starts to hang up, kind of pop it up through the rocks. A lot of bites will come right when it pops off the rock. Or if it's going to break off, click that reel, let it free fall. But pay attention to that line. We'll make sure you're ready. If you feel that tick as it's dropping, engage, set the hook. So again, different approaches for this time of year. But this is prime time to get a giant swim bait bite. So if you're not looking to just catch fish... If you're willing to put in the effort, this is the time to do it. I'll link these baits for you down in the video description. I'll link my favorite colors for each one. I'll link the exact gear, the exact gear that Tim and I throw, as well as some excellent budget gear that will still do a fantastic job for you. I'll put all that down in the description. And then soon, very soon, we'll get back out on the water together. I'm just about patched up now. We're close to getting out here this winter and just going for it. And I cannot wait. Buyer's guides in the rear view mirror, surgery in the rear view mirror. It is time to go fishing. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.